Hey guys, this is Dragosh and a new episode of the podcast is out. This is episode 55. This time around, another member for the community. I had the chance to speak with Mohammed. Mohammed from uh, Egypt originally, but who has moved to um, Munich for, for work. So he's doing software development there. We had the chance to talk a bit more about the transition from Egypt to Munich, about what his kids are doing, how they're integrating, and uh, just a general kind of conversation about life. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, check it out. It was pretty fun to do. And if you guys want to be on the podcast, leave a comment or just send me a message to dragoshcomedy at gmail.com. Enjoy the chat with Mohammed. Yeah, uh, I'm actually pretty yeah. nervous. It's the first time I uh, make an appearance on a podcast. Oh, don't worry, bro. Nobody listens to my podcast, so you're safe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm counting on. Yeah, you're absolutely safe there. Like, don't worry about uh, people kind of judging what you said. There's literally nobody. I mean, there's a couple of people listening to it, but it's nowhere near. It's not Joe Rogan levels, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I also made the mistake of telling my friends that I'm going to be on a podcast with a guy called Dragos who does stand-up comedy in uh, uh-huh. Berlin. Uh, I was, like, checking if they heard about you. I Like, uh, to be honest, I expected them that... that they have never uh, yeah, yeah yeah i was checking right <laughs> so uh they were like yeah when is the podcast we want to tune in and watch and stuff i was like yeah let me let me see how it goes first because he's probably gonna ro- roast the hell out of me and, no i'm not uh, gonna roast you bro your thanks for doing it like <laughs> I, I mean you understand the situation at the moment is a bit fucked here in berlin because i mean you're in munich as well right yeah i'm in munich so the situation is basically uh we can't do any more shows for the next fucking uh month right yeah. Um, so uh, I, I was thinking like, okay, how, what do I do to not go insane? So, and then I was doing this podcast before and the whole kind of, I started doing it at the start of the year, but I kind of ran out of time and didn't have time to properly do it during the summer. Yeah. Uh, and then the whole kind of goal of the podcast is called the Labrador Energy Podcast. And the whole kind of yeah. idea behind it is to talk to people from like different cultures and different backgrounds, people that right. have moved, have traveled, you know, that kind of stuff. And just kind of find out what was the motivator, the cultural shocks. And a lot of times, you know, it also helps me learn a bit more about the cultures and then I can, you know, use that information and burn roast people on the shows, right? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm glad that I'm a, a part of that. Yeah, man. Let's let's uh, let's find out more about you, Mohammed. Is that uh, is that Latino? Is that a Latino name? <laughs> Obviously, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh yeah the most common first name on earth. I don't know if you heard that one before. I, I, I oh, okay, you very nice, Mohammed. Where are you from? Are you Egyptian or Egyptian? Yeah, I'm from Egypt, Cairo, Egypt. Did you come to one of my shows in uh, in Munich or? No, I have never. I actually, I, I I don't know if you remember, but I actually bugged you about this a few times. Like uh, I was always like, "Hey, man, when are you coming to Munich? Are you coming to Munich right. soon?" Or, but, yeah. But uh, I guess like either it happened once and I wasn't really paying attention to my uh, feed, so I didn't know that it happened until after, mm-hmm. uh, or it actually never did. I'm not really sure. But yeah, the, you were like ho- hosting this event on your Facebook page, and it was uh, for. Uh, Chris something? Yeah, Chris During, yeah, yeah. Because he's we yeah, kind of exactly. has a couple of shows uh through for like the propaganda comedy page. But uh yeah, yeah I'm just trying to figure out exactly the the kind of messaging is because like a lot of the a lot of the people that kind of follow me now come from TikTok. How did you find out about my comedy? Uh Instagram actually. Oh Instagram. Did you just recommend it on Instagram or how how is Yeah, like it got it got it, it appeared on my um Instagram homepage and uh, I yeah, I was just like, Yeah, this guy is this guy gets it. <laughs> this guy's funny. Yeah. So so uh, for example, yeah, I kept watching and it was uh, great actually. Was so I'm posting a lot of the clips now. Basically, uh, you know, I have like Facebook because now this year I'm starting to do more digital stuff uh, because last yeah. year I was touring quite a lot. So I didn't really have time to kind of do video editing. Uh, and I have like a lot of uh, a lot of platforms where I'm putting stuff on. I'm putting on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram and on TikTok. And the problem is yep. there's no direct way to communicate to everyone when things are happening, right? So, because for example, yeah, exactly, with TikTok, yeah. if you put stuff on TikTok, they only show it if other people engage with it, and then they, nobody engages just with announcements, right? You guys are going to Munich yeah. if the rest of the people are from like Costa Rica or some other places, right? Yeah. So, trying to figure out exactly what the communication is, is doing. But how, how, let's I talk mean, more the, about you. The website you... should be fine, but I'm sorry? Yeah, I'm trying to, yeah, I was thinking maybe I should just spend a bit of time and put a, put a website together, right? You, you have already, more, like, it's not a website per se, but it's it's like this page where you uh, put in your email so that you're yeah, on the yeah, mailing yeah, yeah. list. Exactly, it's a mailing list thing. Yeah, because yeah. again, it's, I'm doing everything by myself, so it's like so many things you can do, right? It's like, uh, like yeah. how many things can you actually can you do together? Because there's no there's no agents in like for English comedians in this part of the world. There's not a lot of, yeah, there's not yeah, a lot of money yeah. in the industry. So there's, you know, once money comes into the industry, the agents come so you can take, take a cut. But so far... It's uh, difficult to take a cut of, out of nothing, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I mean, you're basically kind of like for me, it feels like you're pioneering this this area. 
like ha having a, a stand-up comedy performer who performs in English in Germany. That's kind of like I didn't expect to see that. You know. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's up and coming now. To be honest, like there's a lot of English uh, English speakers. A lot like yourself. You you I'm not a native English speaker. You're not a native English speaker. There's a lot of this type of uh, kind of personas around Europe, and you know they're enjoying it and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah. But let's let's talk a bit more about you. How did you? So you moved over from Egypt to uh, to Munich, yeah? To Munich, exactly. Yeah, three and a half years ago, exactly. Okay, so you came straight from the motherland, the fatherland. What do you call Egypt? Yeah, exactly. The, the, the land. Yeah, I would say the. I mean, hmm, I don't know. I guess the motherland fits here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, directly from the motherland to to Munich. Yeah. Did they recruit you, or did you find it? Were you proactively so kind of So basically, to move a friend of mine, or a, a guy who used to be a friend of mine. Uh, he used to be a friend of. He's dead. He's dead. You know. No, no, but we just, yeah, like, uh, we had a falling out, like, we're not friends anymore. Got it, he uh, voted for Trump, I get you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, that, that was actually a long time ago. Uh, yeah, like, uh, probably a year after I got here. Uh, okay. Or maybe even less, a few months. They give you the chat, hey, Mohammed, you are too good for me now. You are living in Germany, you are looking down on me. This happens. Well, times. he's actually, he's actually, funnily enough, he's actually the one who got me here. Like he, uh, he was working for a big company here in Munich and he uh, knew about a vacancy that fits my skill set. And he asked me to send him my CV. And then he submitted it to his HR department. They called they me. You up. I, like I wasn't actually planning on moving or searching for a job or anything. Oh, okay. Uh, but that happened. So you're a developer, what do you do? I'm a, yeah, well, you could say, well, not a developer, but a software quality engineer. So okay. uh, it's, it's part of a, it's part of the development process, but not a de developer. Do you do testing or what exactly do you do? Penetration yeah, exactly. testing? Are you a penetration yeah. tester, Mohammed? Uh, well, not penetration testing. I'm not penetrating anything here. Uh, just <laughs> Ooh, that's not good for testing. <laughs> not penetrating anything? Yeah. That's not good like, on Tinder, like man. maybe test automation or, yeah. Okay, so you moved there to, to work for like, is it a gaming company? You don't have to get, say the name of the company. Uh, I'm sorry, come again? Is it a gaming company, like a finance company? No, it's, it's not a guy I wish. I mean, yeah, that, that would be the dream. But no, it's not a gaming company. Well, the, I'm not working for the same company anymore. I left it the, two years after uh, I got here. So I worked for them okay. for two years and then I went to another company, the one that I'm working for now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, you don't have to say the name, and then so you live like. Oh, it's fine. Uh, sh sh you you want to know the name of the company? What, uh, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't right necessarily. Now? I just want to know the industry. I, that's one thing I didn't. Uh, oh, so we create. Um, so we're we kind of create hardware and some software and develop the software that goes with it. This hardware is uh, called an indoor mobile mapping device. Indoor uh, mobile mapping. Okay. Imagine uh, like Google Street, right? For for the house. But not basically, so not houses, but rather like larger industrial scale. Wait, the sound is cutting off a bit. Why is the sound cutting off? Uh, can you hear me okay? I can hear you quite fine. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe it's... maybe move the microphone down a bit. How yeah, about okay, now? Yeah, right. yeah, it sounds good. All right. Uh, yeah, so I was saying, yeah, we create these immo indoor mobile mapping systems. And these are basically um, devices that you take with you in, in, in a facility of some sort. And like we're talking factories like car factories um airports malls you know like on a bigger yeah. scale not just a house um and as you walk it captures the whole um uh, structure that you pass by uh with some laser sensors and it also takes photos so you end up with a like a 3d model of the whole building with uh, 360 panoramas and oh, wow. uh, the possibility to like create points of interest and navigate between them and uh, very yeah, interesting. Those, sounds like it would be very useful for me if I was a bank robber. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The bank out. the thing online for everybody to see. Yeah, the Eastern European yeah. mindset. This is very good for bank robbing. You know, you map is <laughs> one camera there, one camera there. This is very good. Yeah. You know, Ivan, you go. <laughs> very nice. So you've been there for three years and a half, man. Yeah. So is this your first time living out of Egypt? uh yeah well I, i've traveled a few times uh mm -hmm. for business mainly um but yeah it's the first time i i live outside of egypt outside of cairo nice and what was the what was the kind of uh the game changer for you was it the fact that you were really good at english was the job kind of what do you what do you think kind of determined you to move out the money the job well so, the so i don't know how closely you're following the uh politicals uh i shouldn't probably get into that I mean, you don't have to go too much into it, but I, I'm not, uh, during my, uh, you know, my, all the, the newsletters that I've subscribed to, e Egyptian politics is not one of them. 
<laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm bogged down with the Armenian politics at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, to give you the uh, gist of it, it's uh, like we had this uh, um, Arab Spring, right, in 2011, yeah. where uh, half of the Arab countries uh, had their, uh, you know, uh, revolutions and stuff. And uh, things got from bad to worse since then. Oh, it's the Arab winter, yes. Yeah, <laughs> it became the Arab winter pretty much. It went back yeah, in terms and... of seasons. <laughs> <laughs> there was no summer, bro. Okay. So, yeah, it's uh, like the, the whole situation became very, uh, like, I, I, I felt I'm, I'm, I'm being suffocated because of everything that's going on in terms like of... Literally. Like the police yeah. like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so thankfully I wasn't, so I, I'm, I'm like, a, I, I, like not to brag, but I, like I come from a decent family. I live in a decent neighborhood, so I wouldn't typically okay. get harassed by the police per se, but you couldn't really feel like the, the fact that you live in a nice neighborhood or that you're wearing not nice clothes or whatever, doesn't really protect you from like you're kind of you you're kind of the 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 black the african american who lives who lives in a dangerous neighborhood all the time like you're constantly under the threat of being i don't Violence. know like first randomly on the street by uh, right okay okay so it's a bit of a is, is would you say it's like run by the military now egypt or is, is that the situation is it like a democracy yeah more or, or less like... i mean it's it's always been run run by the military in one way or the other uh, is it somewhat totalitarian i'm sorry so is it totalitarian to some degree? You you could say so. I mean, in in, in a military sense, yeah, definitely. I, mean, I just like uh, you could say so. I can't. I can't yeah, definitely. Like I mean, this is gonna this is gonna be online, and you can't take that. That's right. Well, so we can we, we can change we can change the subject. We can talk a bit more <laughs> about your dating life in in Munich if that makes you feel better. Uh, I'm actually married. Uh, there you go. So, so uh, dating life is terrible. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's non non-existent pretty much. Did you make, did you get married with your wife in Egypt or did you kind of find somebody? Yeah, she's, she's also Egyptian. She's from the same neighborhood. Even like we, um, my, my parents' house and her parents' house are like. Sounds like you're minutes. keeping in the family. <laughs> 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 yeah, kind of. I mean, she's a friend of my sister. Uh, okay. okay. That's how we met. It, but, you know, it's very close. You know, it's, uh, it's, you don't have to like kind of worry too much about it. Right. So you guys, you guys, does she speak English, speak German or? She speaks English, yeah. So, uh, well, we both speak Arabic naturally and, uh, and English. Uh, German, not so much, but yeah. So you guys basically, so you're surviving in Germany, not German, yes? Pretty much, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's easy most of the time unless something goes wrong and then you have to like explain a problem or a situation to someone. And, uh, <laughs> it's it's, they it's very good when you don't have a problem. If you have a problem, you're fine. <laughs> exactly pretty yeah. much yeah man it's i feel yeah. like i mean berlin is much better than munich because like a lot of people here speak english yeah definitely definitely the few times i've been to berlin it's uh, it was much easier in terms of communicating with other people yeah and then like you know the like today i I ordered like a new microphone from like uh like from amazon it got delivered to like uh i i fucking they, i wasn't home so it didn't they didn't live it uh, with my neighbor this time they left it with my uh, with one of the spetis around my uh around my uh, neighborhood right like this, yeah. for the for the non Germans, for the seven, one of the Seven Elevens around my neighborhood. So now I gotta figure out which one it is, and then go there and be like, uh, "Hello, they, should like, they go on? Leave you a <laughs> yeah. No, they didn't. That's the thing. There was you. nothing in my mailbox. Oh, cool. Okay. So you, what? You have to guess which one it is. Yeah, what, I'm gonna go from Spetti to Spetti tonight and be like, "Hello." <laughs> yeah, I micro I microphone. <laughs> yeah, you should have someone uh, like a cameraman record that. that, that would yeah, and then basically that's how I buy cocaine because they're gonna give me crack instead of. Oh, you want a secret <laughs> code? These guys are. These guys are. Okay. I live like in a relatively dodgy neighborhood here, so it's uh, always a lot of crack. Last night I was coming home from uh, from from here from the corking space, and then the police were like basically, you know, they're like feeling up a little bit of sexual harassment on some of the locals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so how's the how's the life there? You working? The company is very international, yeah. Uh. Uh, my company is what? I, I didn't get international. That. I mean, you don't have to worry about the German. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's very international. Like it, we have two hundred people, but uh, I think the last time I heard, it was over forty nationalities, forty different nationalities. Oh fuck yeah, man! That's people. good. That's good. Yeah, fucking indoor mapping. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. Really gets the, you know, there's the indoors stuff. everywhere. We get the people going. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's kind of because you you need to have like uh, representatives in, in like different countries where they speak different. Sell the indoor, yeah. <laughs> so everywhere they have like houses, they sell. Uh, 
They sell a lot of so not, you're not you're not doing a lot of marketing to Syria, I take it. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a little Syria joke there. Sorry guys. <laughs> Uh, uh, so did you have like a lot of, uh, what was the kind of experience so far? Do you feel somewhat isolated living in Germany? Did you make a lot of friends? Is there a big expat community? How's I, I have some friends, German and other nationalities as well. Um, it's not, I guess like when you, as you're getting older, it's, uh, less easier to make new friends. Kind of, I don't know. If like you know Jesus, I mean. bro. That's why it's tough. They stab you in the back. They crucify you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, sh- I shouldn't be talking about Jesus with you. I don't know. If, did Mohammed get crucified? No, he didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. No. He didn't. Get, he didn't have one, a couple one, enemies, one of my though. best friends here is called Jesus, by the way. Oh, shout, shout Jesus out to Mohammed him. going out for drinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like the uh, the ultimate. Uh, yeah. That'll be that, that's a funny thing right there. So Jesus tried to tries to pull a prank on you. He's like, I don't drink. Uh, I don't drink alcohol. Don't worry, bro. This is water. <laughs> It turns into wine. A little classic Jesus. Yeah, well, he, he, try, he, try, he, try, he tries to convert me all the time. But where is yeah. he from? I, I told him guy. that he's going to be disappointed eventually. I'm sorry? This Jesus guy, where is he from? Lebanon? Uh, no, he's from Spain, actually. That makes sense. Okay. <laughs> and then you also, have, you also have like a child, yes? You have a small little child? Yeah, I have, I have a daughter. Uh, her name's mm-hmm. Lena. She's turning five this December. Oh, so when you guys moved here, she was like two, yeah? Yeah, uh, a year and a half or something. Yeah. So are you going to have the kind of situation where basically you send her to German school, she learns German, and then basically she's going to be your in-house translator going forward? I'm pretty much looking forward to that, actually. Like, I'm waiting for the point when this happens because I think it's going to, like, even though it's going to suck that your mm-hmm. little kid, you know, keeps correcting you all the time, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's going to be helpful as well. Yeah, like, you're going to send her to be, do, like, uh, uh, all the registrations. All right, Lena, I know you're struggling, <laughs> but we're going to learn how to do taxes today. Uh, yeah. I have 25 that forms I got to fill for the German yeah. taxes. <laughs> yeah. Like maybe there I, I go, give her Lina. the forms to translate for me or something. Yeah. There you go. Oh, Danny, this is great. I'm not, I, I'm, this is like, this is how I integrate doing taxes. So you guys teaching her Arabic as well? I mean, you guys speak Arabic at home, right? We speak Arabic at home. Yes. But she, uh, she's like, she also speaks Arabic, but she speaks a little bit more English because of all the, uh yeah online content that she watches like you know kids programs and cartoons and stuff it's mostly in english so if you watch them so basically you didn't you didn't get the uh you have german tv here did you get like the german uh, registration we we have german tv naturally but we do not watch it because we don't understand a single word so we are relying on streaming services mostly so you you basically put your kid in front of like youtube or you put it in front of uh netflix or well youtube netflix uh disney plus Okay, Just okay. You gotta watch out with those YouTube videos, man. You kind of might have a little uh, flat earth on your hands if you keep letting her <laughs> go down the YouTube rabbit hole, yeah? <laughs> yeah, well, m- my concerns are not, like, did not reach that far at this point. Like, I'm more concerned about, like, the, the kids that she likes to She likes to watch streamers, if you can believe it. Like, streamers? Okay, and, like Twitch streamers? And watching, like, yeah, Twitch streamers, but, like... Those like those kids who play kids games, I, like I don't even know what, the, what what these games are called, but basically like seven, eight year old kids who are seven, playing whatever eight year old streaming. game streamers. Yeah, I imagine like uh, this. Wow, this that's insane. Mind. This is the first time I've heard of this. I know there's like the streaming community is very big. Yeah, and people like watching. Uh, do you play any games? I I do. I play a lot of League of Legends or. Oh okay uh, okay okay yeah yeah. Uh, I, I used to play League of Legends things, as well. Uh, I used to dump a lot of money into skins and stuff, but that was like a couple of years ago. Okay, really? Yeah, bro. I mid, you know, I do jungle. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Rengar for life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not playing anymore? I don't have time. I mean, the thing is, like, it's, it's like, for example, when you do comedy, so I'm doing comedy now, and a lot of times, basically, it's, um, uh, it's a lot of self-management. So basically, I just don't have time. You have to be your own kind of like, uh, you have to be very disciplined, right? But before yeah, I used yeah. to play, I used to play like a lot of, I used to play Malzahar mid pretty aggressively. Okay, that's a, that's a good pick. With like Rod of Ages. Okay. I understand, you know your shit, okay. <laughs> I Bro, I was, I, was, I was up to like silver at one point. I was almost making it to gold. I was like that's raging in the game. You know? fucking, I'm carrying this whole fucking <laughs> team, you plebs. You know, I was yeah. like very integrating in the gaming community. <laughs> You know, I was like, I was like farming, I was farming top with NASA's, bro. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. If you ever decide to, uh, you know, give the game another try or decided to. Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah. I was playing like, I was just, uh, recently I've just kind of been doing Pokemon Go because it's like the most non-committal one that you can do. 
But like yeah. uh, the Pokemon Go, now they have like the battles and then that gets a bit addictive. So I, have, I literally just uninstalled it yesterday. I was trying to play Among okay. Us. Do you know Among Us? I, I downloaded it, but I actually never uh, opened it. So I have Yeah, it's an it. easy like pick up and uh, pick up, play and then go kind of game. So you don't have to kind of like, uh, the, the biggest problem is like they, they take a lot of times, right? So like I think the last game that I played um, intensely, obsessively was, uh, I, got, I have like the Switch, the Nintendo Switch. So I was playing uh, The Legend of uh, Zelda. Uh, Zelda, Breath of the yeah. Wild, I think. Uh, Breath, Breath of the Wild, is that what it's called? Yeah. yeah. That was about like two, three years ago. That's when I was playing quite intensely. But after that, I haven't really been playing much. And then, uh, Do you like that, that the, the Nintendo Switch thing? Do you like it? Like, do you, do, do I mean, you I, I, it? I wasn't playing it on like this. I was playing it on the TV. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Because my think, wife got me this, uh, the, the smaller, I don't know what it's called, like Nintendo Switch Lite or something. So there's a Lite one? I didn't know. I, there's, I know the yeah, DS there's one that you DS. cannot play on... Like it, it does it work with a TV? Like it has its uh, small screen, and that's how basically that's how you play it. You cannot. The, connect the it to problem a TV. when I was playing it on like the small screen it was that it kept hurting my uh, my wrists. Yeah. And it was like yeah. getting I mean, super hot, and I was like. For for me, that wasn't even the problem. I don't know. Like I didn't like I played with it a couple of times, but uh, I I don't even know where it is right now. I just said it's yeah, that's uh, fine. it's a nice gift so that I don't hurt her feelings. But <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, I I didn't I didn't really. Yeah, this is what happens when you let the women buy games. <laughs> let them buy games. Well, I, 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 I kind of said something like that, but then I said I, I was joking. It's a really nice. Yeah, you gotta watch out, bro. You gotta watch out. You gotta, <laughs> yeah. you know, you gotta yeah. maintain. You gotta maintain peace in the family, right? You can't start exactly, all this kind yeah. of. Yeah. Nice. So, did Oof. you? Let's talk a bit more about your time in uh, in Germany so far. Did you have a lot of crazy uh, interactions with the Germans? Did you have any cultural shocks here? Well. Cultural, I wouldn't call them shocks, but the, there was a few things that I uh, that I found like uh, k- kind of weird at, at the beginning. Like for example, when you're uh, when it's your birthday, right? And back in Egypt, like your colleagues or your friends or your close friends, they throw you a party and they get you a cake and like right. collect money and buy you a nice present or something. Um, here, I found out that that, that actually it's a uh, it's you who who throws the party when you have, when you're having a birthday. You have to spend money. Kind of yeah, like I was like, what the fuck? It's my birthday. Like, uh, it's my birthday, and I lose money. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was like the biggest thing that surprised me. But other than that, I mean, I I have internet, so I wasn't really surprised by anything. Right? Okay, so you kind of knew what you were getting yourself into. Yeah, do you guys? Yeah. I mean, yeah, last obvious. time I was in Munich. Munich is much more expensive than Berlin, though. But I use. I do you keep to the faith? Do you drink? Do you uh, you keep it halal? Uh, I I I try to keep it halal. Yeah. Okay, I, so you okay, so you're good. You're a good life. Muslim, yes. I try to be. Okay, so basically no drinking for you. So what do you guys do out there to kind of socialize? The families they kind of hang out with? Uh, are there other Arabic families, a lot of German? Yeah, there's, there's actually, I have a few classmates. So the, the, that, that guy I told you about, the guy who used to be my friend, he, he was the first of my group in the class. So I know him since like way back when we were in okay. uh, college, like since 2005 or something. Uh, and uh, he was like the first one of our class to get here to Munich and mm-hmm. I was the second I followed him I came here mm-hmm. and then like a uh, three more of other our friends uh, joined us so we're like we, we have like a mini group from back uh, at university we have these guys here in Munich right. and uh, one of them is married with a kid too so we we try to hang out whenever we can of course like after this whole corona thing uh, we're not seeing each other as often as we used to right uh, but yeah but but there, there is a community and uh, there's a lot of close friends here. Yeah, a lot of, so, last time I was in Munich, I had like a, the the front table was like twelve mix, twelve Egyptians. There was, of, uh, <laughs> yeah. there was a lot of them. I was like, all right, guys, you guys fucking brought the family around. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, some of yeah. them were students. Some of them were like uh, software developers. A lot of software developers. I think there's yeah, a massive brain drain when it comes to like yeah. the tech talent, right? Yeah. So then, uh, you know, obviously, and then there's not a lot of things to kind of, uh, I don't think there's a lot of stand-up comedy happening in uh, Arabic in, uh, in Munich, but then English, everybody speaks. And then a lot of people consume it online. Do you, guys, do you watch a lot of stand-up online? Oh, yeah, definitely. That's, that's my most favorite thing after playing games. Oh, what do you, who do you watch? Like, mostly Netflix or is there like, uh, is there like an Egyptian? Well, mostly Netflix, yeah. Like, uh, you, know, you know, the, the normal, the, I, I, I don't. I don't watch anything exotic or like super fancy or super right. or super obscure. Like um, yeah, Louis C.K., Dave Chappelle, Chappelle. Uh, the mainstream uh, yeah, kind of stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's good, man. It's popular. Also, up, like I a, think few, a few of the others, but I don't remember their names. Right now. I think uh, the big thing is with uh, with Netflix kind of pumping, pushing so much money into comedy in the past couple of years, it's really helped us like the local guys because like oh, okay, there's still a lot of, you know there's uh, local yeah. comedy in my area. 
And I think yeah. the difficult part is always coming up with new content. So that's why for me, like uh, the past couple of months, I've just been, I was like, I have all these clips of me doing crowd work. Let's just fucking dump it on there and see what happens. And I saw like Andrew Schultz kind of doing well with it. And I was like, oh, let's just put all the thing we have on the, on the thing and yeah. then try to come up with new material in the meantime. But yeah. uh, it's, it's, uh, it's good to see it kind of growing. And, you know, people have more and more appreciations for it. I, uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, moving it online is a bit more difficult. Like this one month that I have now, I have to figure out what the fuck I'm doing. So I'm still posting a lot of comedy, but then uh, obviously you can't really, it's not the same doing comedy over a Zoom call, right? I mean, we, we joke here, a couple of jokes here and there, but it's not yeah. like, hey, well, let me tell you a bit more about Romania. <laughs> Did you know a lot about Romania before coming to Egypt, before coming to Germany? Uh, well, not really. Like, uh, I, I, I would like to, you know, appear as the guy who reads a lot about everything, but uh, yeah, not, not, not much. Uh, that That's I fine, man. I don't think it's, Egyptian books have like a whole kind of chapter on Romania. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, not, yeah. not to say that Romanians book, books don't have a chapter on Egypt. We have like a whole chapter on Egypt, but it's like, uh, you, know, you know, like it stops at like zero. The year zero, that's where it stops. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Everybody knows up till the year zero, but afterwards. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, and then uh, you go to Egypt. Oh, okay, things are pretty much the same. <laughs> No, uh, but uh, you have a, let me ask you. So, are you from uh, away from Cairo, or what city are you from? I'm I'm from Cairo, yeah. I, nice. I, was I know, born there, lived there my whole life before I got here. What's uh, what's let's talk about food, man. Do you miss like the uh, the Egyptian food? Well, so that's one of the perks of being married. My wife is actually a, you an cook, amazing yeah? cook. Yeah, she she cooks the most amazing food. Uh, yeah, you have no idea. Okay, we're gonna I have to. This, is, to this section is now called "Praise Your Wife." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in case she watches, yeah. Exactly. No, yeah, so, so, so my so. wife, she the like, best cook. What kind of stuff does she cook? Let's talk about cook, man. I'm, I'm making like a, a, a list of stuff to eat when I go to Egypt. Yeah, yeah, like everything from traditional dishes to international dishes, but like nothing German, of course. It's, there's no <laughs> such thing as German food. I mean, you you did say she's a good cook, a good so. German. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, yeah, but what's your favorite uh, thing to eat? Well, I'm not a I'm not a picky eater actually. Okay. Like whatever she cooks, I'm, I'm usually fine. Like I don't even ask. Uh, but okay. She's, she's so a lot, there's a lot of hummus in this diet, or what? what <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Uh, but like, yeah. Let me. Oh, yesterday was actually a diet day, so I only ate a tuna salad. But the day before, we had, I think, fajita. Fajita. Okay. Yeah. Classic. Straight yeah. from the Nile. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. You know, with uh, fajitas and tuna, the, the traditional uh, <laughs> Egyptian dishes, yeah? <laughs> Rams is well, the second, yeah, well, I mean, fajitas. If we're talking about traditional food, uh, like the other day we just had uh, kushari. I don't know if you know what kushari Kusher. is. Kushari. Like, there's kushari, a what is that? It's a uh, vegetarian dish. Basically, uh, it consists of uh, pasta, rice, lentil, and uh, chickpeas, uh, fried onions, and you put a bunch of sauces on top, like tomato sauce, red sauce, and then some uh, spicy sauce and so something we call. Does the flavor come from the sauce, or where does the flavor come from? Yes, the flavor comes from the sauce, and the the onions they're very, um, yeah. Do you fry the onions, or is it like how do you do? It? Uh, you can fry them, uh, but you can also get them like. Uh, Pre-packed, ready, pre-fried. Do you guys have a lot of peanut sauce? Because, like, for example, one of my favorite places to eat here is like this uh, Sudanese little place. They do like Sudanese chicken sandwiches, but they put a lot of peanut sauce on it. Do you guys is Egyptian uh, cuisine based no, on peanuts? No, that's not typical Egyptian cuisine. No, I would like to try that myself sometime. Yeah, I man, we, we come from Berlin. You know, it's uh, whenever the fucking pandemic is over. Yeah, actually, a good thing about Berlin, since we're talking about this, is the food. It's it's much better than than here in Munich, to be honest. Like uh, the, you get generally a lot in terms of, of eating out. Oh, in terms of eating out, yeah, like the variety is much, much better, and the the, the quality of the food itself somehow, I don't know. I guess it's because it's like so multicultural and so international, right? So you have like a lot of people kind of from Probably, all over the world. Yeah. They bring their their own little Probably. cuisines here. Yeah. Do you miss Do you miss home? Do you miss stuff from home? Well, not home itself, but I definitely <laughs> miss my friends. I miss my friends, uh, not the family. Okay. Yeah, I mean. I mean, it's, it's, I, I get you, bro. You know, sometimes you want running water. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. More. I, the the thing that I, I I didn't like the most was actually the weather. It's incredibly hot in Egypt. In Egypt, yeah, you have to like. Uh, so how do you kind of survive that? You have to have hot. AC everywhere, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You cannot like the 
the time I spend, like after I get from my apartment to the um, uh, underground parking, mm -hmm. like these two minutes, I, I feel like I'm melting until I get. Oh, the okay, I see, gotcha. Yeah, see. So it's, yeah, uh, that's it's tough, different, man. And considering like difficult. the whole kind of global warming thing, it might be even worse uh, in the next couple of years, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no bueno. I guess. And your friends, your family, what, what do they kind of, you, you said your parents are relatively okay family. What do your parents do? Uh, come again? What, what about my what, what, do, what do your friends and family do like in Egypt? Are everybody still working in like in software development or what do they use? Well, no, actually most of my software developer, like most of my friends who work in the uh, software industry have traveled to one country or the other, whether it's in Europe or the US or Canada or Australia. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this is Everybody's like, great, like great, uh, great. Fl fleeing the country, kind of uh yeah. but yeah the rest of them who are not in the industry are still working in, in egypt yeah like doing the same thing basically okay gotcha okay yeah interesting there's a lot of uh, a lot of people kind of basically that's kind of like the way out it seems at the moment uh the stuff that's yeah, yeah absolutely jobs, right? absolutely yeah because there's so much stuff does india have any oh sorry india egypt have any big startups i don't know why i was thinking of india stuff. Does, does Egypt uh, uh, have like do you a, mean like like locally locally big or like internationally big i mean both i guess internationally i wouldn't say so Not but yet, locally yeah. yeah definitely we have a few a few really uh, good startups. what's the big ones locally what kind of industry e-commerce or uh well yeah there was this company that was uh acquired by amazon a couple of years ago uh, it was called souk which means literally translates to market market ah okay uh, souk in romania means juice yeah <laughs> And uh, yeah, they got acquired by a uh, by Amazon, uh, okay. and they had like uh, they had like uh, branches in um, a couple of Arab countries, like I think UAE, Saudi Arabia, and all of these also got like all these gotcha. uh, sister companies got acquired by Amazon as well. And then uh, I wanted to ask you, like I think we're kind of coming in on the time limit soon. Uh, I wanted to ask you a couple more questions, like uh, with with regards to like uh, the religion, do you kind of go to the mosque or like any form of like place in Munich uh, do you guys go like daily like you know do you have like the ritual of going to a, a place of worship yeah yeah absolutely do I have places to do like, it to be honest I don't usually go all the time like I'm supposed to like Muslims are supposed to pray five times a day and at least once a, a week they times, need to man. go to the mall yeah it is a lot of times I mean yeah uh, heaven doesn't come cheap right yeah it's just so. a word. tell my grandma that like <laughs> he has been contributing financially aggressively it's not cheap yeah uh yeah so you have to pray five times a day and at least once a week on friday kind of like how christians go to church on sun on a sunday yeah uh, so yeah, yeah. you kind of need to go to the mosque there and attend the like there's a speech going before the prayer and you know, a whole thing yeah now these now there's a lot of people kind of like at least in berlin here a lot of people have kind of replaced uh uh you know the whole kind of going to a place of worship with meditation you know yeah my body is my temple so i shall keep it in great health yes. I, shall I, I don't know for, for, for me that sounds like such bullshit to be honest but yeah i mean i've I, done a bit of meditation and it helps kind of like calm down your anxiety but i don't subscribe to the my body i mean okay i see where you're coming from my body is my temple but yeah. why would you say that out loud <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good you know? point. yeah. <laughs> you know this is why we need to bring back bullying <laughs> yeah all right, man. I think yeah, we're right. gonna wrap it up. So, do you have any questions for me before we kind of wrap it up? We did a oh, yeah, actually, uh, uh, the, mm -hmm. the time ran by so far. I actually wanted to ask you a lot of things about your, like your start, what you like, whether you like how you started, whether you do something else for for a living other than comedy these days. I think now, now, comedy. now I'm basically doing. You know what I did today? Like now I'm kind of focusing mostly on comedy. But uh, today somebody reached out to me via TikTok and offered me a gig. You know what the gig is? Yeah do a reaction video the gig is for me to film a video of me reacting to the porn that they make to the porn that they make and it's really <laughs> well paid yeah. okay so, bro okay, best job ever. It's, the uh, series is called comedians react to porn and they are a porn okay. company and they want to advertise it by you know comedians reacting to the porn so basically now i am going for the next couple of weeks i'm going to get paid Consider a lot of the money to watch porn and yeah, okay. Well, okay, and uh, I assume this is like a uh, prime content, not the not the regular free porn that we. No, no, this is yeah. It's like, it's like it's like it's it's basically uh, directed and produced by women. So all the people in, involved are women. I think they get a guy in there every now and then, just for the <laughs> you know for the penis requirement. You know, when there's no as a tool. I hope you're gonna. I hope you said yes. 
Oh, yeah, yes of course, I'm going to do it. I asked, right, uh, awesome. do, I have to, uh, do I have to also participate? They said no. <laughs> uh, I would have, you know, did you ask whether you have to for, participate you know? or did you ask to participate? No, I asked. Is there any chance Excellent. that we can, you know, maybe visit the, the set? <laughs> Get an autograph from the superstars, you know. <laughs> it's, it's not okay. going, bro. You just shut the fuck up and just watch it and react. You know, don't, don't jerk off, you know. This is where this is epic. This is for you. The children are gonna watch this. Okay. Okay, I see. I see. Well, that's that's an interesting gig. Okay. And what for about sure, what about uh, so, uh, these weird stuff? Hmm? Would you would you call yourself a big timer? I mean, I know that you opened for uh, you opened for uh, Jim Gaffigan. Jim Gaffigan? No, not not even close, bro. No, there's no. If I were a big timer, I wouldn't been doing like a podcast from a fucking uh, you know club club you wouldn't meeting be room in a quarantine yeah. space. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah if I was yeah, a big timer, okay. we wouldn't have this conversation, Mohammed. <laughs> you know how many more Mohammeds are out there? You know, <laughs> so on my list of Mohammeds, you are like five thousand million. <laughs> nah, not yet, man. It's still. I mean, it's it's slowly uh, getting a bit more diffuse. momentum at the moment with like TikTok and stuff. But uh, I think yeah. it's difficult to kind of. Oh no, it's like. It's such a small, the, the comedy scene in Europe is so small. It's so tiny compared to the U.S. that it's yeah. like, you know, like the shows that I do around Europe are like for 30 to 40 people at, 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 at once, right? Like before the pandemic, I was doing like maybe like 100 max in terms of the size of the show. Uh, and mm -hmm. the Jim Gaffigan thing was kind of like, uh, again, that, uh, you know, obviously I sent him my stuff and he liked it or whatever. But it was also, let's say that the, 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 the pool of available comics is very small <laughs> for them to choose, right? Mm -hmm. So okay. I'm not trying to put but myself. How, how many people? Anything. How many people were there when you when you opened? I think the biggest one was about 900 people, which is like a proper, like well, a pro like pretty cool, pretty decent big size. Felt great. You but know, but I, I feel like you're 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 getting a lot of momentum right now. Am I right? Uh it's it's getting better. I guess it's not. Uh, it's it's uh, on TikTok that a lot of momentum is because I think the following there is growing much faster. Because I started mm -hmm. the TikTok in like uh, May when the pandemic was happening, so that's like like ninety thousand now. So like in, in, in just a couple of months, ninety thousand is, is a great number. Wow, that's impressive. But oh, it's not cool. translating to Instagram and YouTube. Uh, but I think you know in time it will come. So I'm not too worried about it. I guess the the key now is it's difficult to do comedy in Europe and get known for it because again you have to. There's so much. There's so many options of entertainment, right? Especially online. You know, there's so many yeah. things you can choose for. So it's really difficult to kind of get the attention of the people and get the message out. But TikTok has a great discovery mechanism. So that's helped a lot of people kind of find my content. And uh, yeah, you know, slow and steady, I guess. Once the show starts, that also helps. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But for now, just kind of, you know, slowly put more videos, you know, keep, keep on the grind, right? Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. That's and the, then we'll that's see how, kinda, how it goes. Slow and steady, yeah, steady. not big time, basically, to answer your question. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I recognize talent when I see it. And uh, I honestly, I think you're going to make it, at, like, maybe, I don't know, 10 years or so, we're going to. Yeah, so I yeah, think that's usually kind of the trajectory. It takes a bit of time to kind of things to kind of blow up, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's you gotta enjoy the ride. Uh, sometimes it is frustrating when you see like uh, random videos that like of random stuff doing it on YouTube, like with millions of views. I'm like, what the fuck? This yeah. shit is so shitty. But uh, it's again, they've been at it for like 10, 15 years, and you know, it's about like it's about compound, comp compound the growth, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's, and that's uh, exactly you know, right. slow and steady. We'll see where it goes. Uh, yeah, I want to ask you uh, another question. Uh, mm -hmm. Do we have time for that? Or? Uh, we have Is one more because I, then I got to uh, basically kind of vacate the room at, uh, at right, 5 Right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, so uh, your, your, your uh, material that you put on Instagram, like do you, how do you improvise like all these things that you uh, say to the audience? Like it, it feels like you're very quick on your feet, you know what I mean? I mean, it feels like practice, sometimes I, guess. I feel like it maybe stayed like is this guy did he tell them to add like you know no it's impossible to stage it i think the it's just practice and then the one of the reasons why for the past i think and i i was not that great at crowd work in the past year but i guess since we started doing shows back in berlin uh one thing happened uh in usually we would do one show a night and have like maybe like 80 people in the show right but since mm -hmm. the pandemic what happened was we can't have 80 people in the room so the max we can have is like 25 30 people but obviously that's not sustainable because you can't make any money out of that. So what we started doing, yeah. we started doing two shows a night. So we started doing a 7 p.m. and a 9 p.m. So then we do 7 p.m., 9 p.m., Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So now basically I'm getting, I'm getting twice the stage time. Yeah. So then it means I can practice more and more. And, you know, I'm basically trying out so much that it starts kind of rolling. You kind of, you get into the groove of like saying it there. And it's yeah, like, yeah. like the more you practice, the better you get, right? And, yeah, uh, absolutely. And I'm hosting a lot of these shows. A lot of these shows, basically, I don't... Uh, I don't like just go in there and like we have a host and then comedians or like a lineup of comedians, which is like maybe like five or six. So then usually the host is me or another guy. And then when I'm hosting, I don't do my material because it's difficult to get people laughing just with material. 
So I just look at interaction. And so basically what it means that is on average per show, I sometimes get like um, maybe 40 minutes of practice on per show, right? So if I do two mm -hmm. shows a night, it's almost like an hour and a half of practice. Yeah. And then out of the hour and a half, you only see the good stuff. Oh yeah, that's a, that's another thing actually. Like it's kind of like streamers, you know. Like if you watch a whole game, yeah, you're gonna see like all the fuck ups that they uh, yeah, exactly, that they go exactly, that they exactly. have to go through. But if you're watching the yeah the the montage, then it's uh, so you uh, again. I'm only I'm only like out of like one hour and a half per day. I'm only putting up like thirty seconds, right? Yeah. So it's that that little kind of drop of like uh, sparkle of greatness uh, right. there. But then that's all you need to know. That's that's how everything works, right? Right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, I get it. And but yeah, I'm, I'm, pre like, I'm pretty sure that it's still very enjoyable, the whole thing. Like, uh, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to getting a chance to attend one of your shows, whether here in yeah, New man, York come, or uh, maybe I'll come, I'll come to Berlin. Well, whenever, uh, whenever shit is back, uh, back up and functioning, we can uh, do another show in Munich and, you know, you can bring, uh, bring the fam, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Bring absolutely. Abdullah, bring Hamza, you know, bring <laughs> the boys, man. Bring you two, <laughs> you know? Get the yeah. gang together. Yeah, we're get, gonna gonna hook you up with a couple of uh, showrooms. I don't know. Alhamdulillah, Habibi. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. All right. Yeah, yeah, man. Great, All right, man. Let's uh, wrap it up. Thanks a lot for being on the Labor Energy Podcast. Hope you had fun. Uh, make sure to share it, send it to your friends, and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see you in person in Munich whenever we come by. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. Thanks a lot, Mohammed. Have a great weekend. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Bye bye. See you later, man. Hey guys, how's it going? This is Dragush, uh, straight from the stage. Wanted to thank you a lot for watching this video. If you guys did enjoy the video, please do subscribe, like, and comment. And also watch some of my other videos. I've got a bunch of videos throughout this whole channel, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you, and see you in the next one.